All right, well, I'm here with Sean Spacht from Phantom. So Sean, it's great to see you again. I'm glad you're here in Crested Butte. Tell me a bit about your role with Phantom. So um, thanks for having us. Um, it's been a blast to be here in Crested Butte. Um, a lot of got, got a lot of great memories of this place and then it's always fun to come back and uh, kind of reinvigorate some really core skiing stoke. Um, my position with Phantom Glide is product and sales manager. So um, I manage all of our project development and then um, work with our sales team to kind of develop our marketing strategies and things like that and um, bring the product to the people. So um, it's really uh, fun to be involved on both sides of that. Um, I get all of the consumer feedback. I get to take it right to my team and then really work hard to get those messages back out to the public. And with a um, a product like Phantom, that communication, that feedback loop being really short and immediate and well managed is um, a really important part of what's what's allowed us to grow as a company. That's awesome. And so I guess just to start off, let's get really clear about what Phantom Glide is and maybe what it isn't for those misconceptions out there. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, first and foremost, we're a base treatment. And, you know, we were uh, kind of conceived at a time where the world was becoming uh, really aware of the environmental impacts of fluorocarbon waxes and what they were doing to our watersheds. Uh, being based in Utah, that is a top of mind concept and conversation that we have regularly. Um, so we wanted to develop a product that was an eco-conscious alternative to the repeated applications of fluorocarbon waxes. Um, so at the time, we thought, is there a way to treat a polyethylene base with a chemical that can make it slide over snow more easily? And is there a way to make that permanent so you don't have to do it in a repeated way? So um, what that led to, though, is some com kind of common terminology that's used. And, and most people will ask, um, what is what is that phantom wax? And first and foremost is it's not a it's not a wax. It's a it's a liquid treatment that absorbs through the base, and then we use a UV light bed. It's a patented process to polymerize that that chemical to the base material. So um, it essentially makes the base more hydrophobic or waterproof, which in turn breaks down friction and makes the ski slide over snow. And it becomes a permanent part of that base material for the useful life of a ski. So you can do repeated grinds on a ski, you can tune a ski, you can even wax a ski or not, you know? And um, so those are some of the evolutions of our conversation around Phantom um, is, is how, you, how the product works, what it is and things like that, because we were very disruptive. You know, we came out in the market and we said, never wax your skis again. <laughs> Well, there's um, a couple thousand year history of doing that to skis to make them go downhill. So um, it was something that um, the industry, we kind of put a line in the sand. But at the time, given the environmental impacts of wax, it was really important to draw that line. And I think the, the base treatment industry, the wax industry, um, the glide industry has done really responsible things coming back around with some really eco-conscious alternatives to those um, chemicals. So we've evolved our conversation and we've had learnings as well. And, and the conversation around Phantom is um, very similar to the conversation you would have around ski boots. You know, all ski boots these days are great, um, but we know that custom footbeds make them better, you know? So can you take this baseline of performance and improve upon it? And that's what we're doing with Phantom Glide is, is we want anybody that has a base that slides on snow, skiers, snowboarders, Nordic skiers, you know, anybody that moves over snow wants to have a predictable good time, you know? So the conversation around Phantom really has evolved to, you know, you can buy a ski with a really good base, and then you can elevate that level of performance permanently with a one-time treatment. So, so we like to call Phantom Glide a base treatment, you know, and it's a one-time permanent base treatment. And I think that's really the, the truly revolutionary thing that we've brought to the ski industry. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I guess before we get too far into the process, um, what's the kind of easiest or simplest way to sort of explain how this permanent base treatment works and what, what it's actually doing to the ski in like a really easy to conceive sort of way? Yeah, so a really easy way to kind of picture it in your head is it's like water filling up a jar of marbles. Mm -hmm. If the marbles were your base material, we're going to fill that jar of marbles with a liquid and then we're going to make that a solid material. So it's going to bond to the polyethylene plastic on a molecular level. Mm -hmm. So your brain has to think really small to understand Phantom, um, you know, in that space. But the idea is 
Um, we don't want to fill the the porous regions of a base because that's where wax and all the other topical treatments really um, find their space. We want to bond to that polyethylene molecule permanently. So, um, but I think uh, one of the other things I used to describe it very often is like a wood stain. Mm -hmm. Wax would be like a paint. And phantom is more like a stain. So it's going to absorb into the into that and permanently make a change to that base material. Awesome. Well, that's a great way for people to think about it and a nice picture in my head. So yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I guess also maybe just mentioned a bit more about how, like, how phantom was started and how it's evolved over the course of that. Yeah. So um, phantom... Um, you uniquely enough, uh, I, I, th I would say unique in the ski world, but it was actually a Kickstarter uh, first. And uh, it started with kind of a napkin, bar napkin idea. Um, a, a very simple version of this technology is um, used to keep ketchup from sticking to the inside of a bottle. <laughs> um, so um, over dinner, someone was like, ski bases are plastic. Why, you know, if we can make ketchup bottles slippery? Can we make ski bases slippery? So it started with the really kind of that idea. Um, and then the process, uh, we worked with the University of Utah um, lab there to essentially, we took the idea to them and said, hey, is this even possible? And their uh, material scientists and everything were, were obviously being skiers and, and outdoors people in Utah jumped at the opportunity to work with a, a ski brand. Um, but the process originally was a two-part, think of like a two-part epoxy. It was a two-part process. Each part had to be cured in the sun because we had photo initiators. So we used UV light to activate that chemical process. And it took six hours wow. per part <laughs> of perfect uninterrupted sun. Oh, um, Good for so, Colorado, but not Yeah. Not so, so people bought in and, and they bought into the idea and they bought into the eco message, but the process wasn't approachable to the market. And then the second iteration of that was a two-part process. It took an hour for each one. And then we got it down to a one part. Um, and then in our latest evolution of product, we've actually been able to get that product down to the viscosity of about rubbing alcohol. So a very thin liquid that's able to be sprayed onto the base. So much simpler application process. Um, it absorbs much more efficiently and it leaves way less residue on the base. So after the process is finished, it's a very quick cleanup. Um, so all of these things were just, you start with the raw idea and then you take it to our ski technicians and our shops and our retail spaces and, and you learn and you evolve your process to, to fit a model that that is approachable you know and i think this newest iteration we've gotten the entire process from raw ski to ski hill mm -hmm. to 25 minutes awesome um so so really approachable really efficient and then the the consumer when they when they pay 150 dollars to a ski technician to make their skis move over snow i think there's a it's kind of common to think like all we really know is like shiny and does it feel slippery when I get in the lift line? Mm -hmm. So that first impression feel is super important when you have a hand base treatment. And that was something that we really focused on in this iteration. So um, we have a, a, a really, really nice feel when you throw the skis down on the snow. And then um, glide should be something that you don't notice. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the things we wanted to shoot for is we're not claiming to be the fastest product on the snow. We want to be predictable. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's where we kind of um, want to make sure that we're setting the proper expectation for people when it comes to moving over snow and things like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think with that, let's talk about the latest iteration and some of the uh, process that goes into it, as well as the products that you have available. Yeah. So um, so our core product is our Phantom Glide base treatment. So if you can imagine buying a new ski and then getting your ski treated with Phantom, you're gonna go into a shop. We offer that in a spray bottle, that that little metal bottle there uh, will do 50 pairs of skis or 50 snowboards. Um, so we put that as a back shop product. It's a service upgrade for any shop or basically an add-on component um, to a ski purchase. Um, but that product is essentially, like I said, boosting your, your base performance. Um, so that's something that is gonna get discussed throughout the purchase process, you know, um, as an add-on. And we also have what we term our single application kit. We had previously marketed that as a do-it-yourself kit. Um, and along with this, which what you don't see here is we have a 200 centimeter UV light bed that goes in the back of a shop. And that was really a key part of our innovation is, you know, we had this product that needed 
in first six hours of uninterrupted sun. And now we've got it to 20 minutes. The reason we can do that is we developed this amazing light bed that uses UV light to concentrate that photo energy into the base of the ski and make the process really fast and efficient. Um, so we have this single application kit. We change it from DIY to single application because the best place to have phantom applied is by an authorized dealer and someone that's trained to do it with the tools that make it the most efficient way. Um, so there's still all the things you would need to take that home and do it yourself if you wanted to. It takes one hour in the sunlight, you know? So um, so that still exists, but by calling it a single application, it, it drives that consumer to the, to the proper place to get it applied, um, which is really kind of a, a fun challenge. You know, I think ski waxing is something that we've always, it's, it's almost like a, um, a ritualistic preparation for powder days and things like that. You know, I, I religiously am just like, want to go hang out in the garage as soon as the report says 20 inches. So I'm yeah. like, all right, let's Time do it. You know? Um, so we didn't want to take that away. <laughs> yeah. You know, what we want to do with Phantom is we want to make the process of caring for your skis and having a good experience on the snow approachable and understandable and simple. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's really the the goal of Phantom. So so that's our core product. Um, and then really the next evolution, which is this year is essentially what do you, what do you do once you have Phantom? What's the expectation of the product for for life? We make a lifetime guarantee of glide. There's so many variables that come into to moving over snow, mm -hmm. like the structure of your bases, you know, the pattern that's ground in there, whether it's super warm or super cold. Mm -hmm. Um, whether you are constantly ripping skins on and off your skis and things like that. Um, so we wanted to address essentially, again, an ease of care for your skis. So we've developed um, obviously a simple base cleaner. As a chemical company, we can do a base cleaner. Um, you need to clean your skis before you apply it. And then periodically getting dirt and grime and skin glue off your skis is something um, that is just kind of part of the process. So a simple... Um, eco-conscious, clean base cleaner. Um, we kind of recommend less is more, you know, you know, so just keeping your bases clean is part of that. And then we developed this base care kit, which is a series of kind of 3M pads. We went really deep into the car detailing world and body work world and worked with 3M to get a cadence of things. And, and our, our basis of, of using this stuff is if you were to take your ski and lean it up against the trunk of your car in the parking lot, can you make a performance improvement for the day of skiing? Nice. You know, um, we found that when you go down a rabbit hole of how do you take care of your skis, it starts on some like World Cup bench with a ski held in a special vice and all of these things. And the idea of like, I want to have this treatment done to my skis so I can do it and forget about it. No, I'm gonna have a good time. And then like, if I have to do anything, can it be very simple to do, take very little time. So 30 seconds with each one of these pads and you can actually see a reduction in the oxidation and the base abrasion in the ski, which is gonna improve gliding over snow. So we have a, a clean cleaning pad, a priming pad and a polishing pad. And um, these tests were really fun to do because um, you can take a base material and terry cloth rags get a lot of surface area and a lot of drag on them. So we were taking these rags and running them down 190 centimeter skis and polishing different sections. And you could literally see it slip along the way. And then um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Alta rope toe, mm -mm. but it's about maybe 50 vertical feet. And our PhD chemist and myself have skied about a half a million vertical feet oh on that God. rope toe. Lots of laps. Doing lots of laps <laughs> of very slow speed glide out tests because mm -hmm. The truth about glide and performance is each one of these, we want to make sure you don't notice glide until you can't keep up. Mm -hmm. Everything feels good when you're going fast. It's when you're going slow that you notice the fall off. So, um, so we spend a ton of time on snow. It's one of the greatest parts about my job, uh, really validating each step of this process um, along with our, our formulations and things like that. So. Um, we work with the PhD chemist in house. Um, he's an incredible skier and a good friend. And it's in Phantom as a brand. It's myself and him. Um, so, so that feedback loop is immediate and it's super small. And we're super involved in in everything that we do. But he holds us to a scientific standard. You know, so in my world in sales, like the product leads the way. It, it works. We've had incredible momentum, momentum and incredible industry adoption in the last two years. And with this new evolution, it's just been phenomenal to see 
people really understand what we're trying to do. Um, but he doesn't let me say anything that can't be validated in a peer review. So, um, so that's one of the biggest things I think is, is every single piece of this is um, developed and tested right in Salt Lake City, Utah. The machines are, are manufactured by a metals manufacturer in West Valley, Utah, and built by a tech company in Sandy, and then shipped right from Salt Lake. So when you talk about not only our, our sustainability kind of as far as what we, do, what we set out to do, keeping our supply chain short, keeping everything super local is, is kind of core to our business at Phantom as well. So I know Phantom kind of set out trying to address a, a pretty big problem in the ski industry when it came to the harm that was being, or the harm that was happening because of the wax that we were using. And so that was sort of the origin. Um, but now it seems like there's a, a more of a story there as far as all the things that you guys are doing to maybe address sustainability, both from what the products are doing as well as how you're operating as a company. So maybe just speak a bit more to that. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have three pillars at Phantom that we operate on. And, you know, it's, it's permanence, performance, and environment. You know, so we want to make sure that when we're developing our product that we're raising all three of those at the same time. We can make products that are really fast and really harmful to the environment or really fast and really good for the environment, but then maybe not permanent. So we want to make sure that permanent component is something that makes Phantom unique. Um, and that really kind of is a huge part of our, our um kind of sustainability initiatives, but then also looking and addressing with each evolution of our product, looking at our packaging, looking at, at what we're using and how we're using it, where we're procuring those products from and things like that. Um, we've been doing some sustainability calculations and some carbon footprint calculations, and um, we've kind of done some better or worst and done the same thing when you look at, say, the wax industry, because people want to know how does Phantom compare to wax or what's the, what's the break even point in, in our carbon footprint? So um, thinking if we were to get our, our chemicals, our supplies from the furthest reaches that we could get them in a worst case scenario, obviously we're focusing on keeping that local and, and localized um, and, and think of it in a best case scenario. So in a worst case scenario, saying the most ego conscious wax in the worst case scenario of Phantom, we actually um, break even in carbon footprint at about seven waxes. So seven times you wax your skis, you're going to break even. Um, at, a, at a best to worst, it's about a one to one. You know, so one phantom treatment is going to equal in carbon footprint similar to one wax treatment. So the average in there is four to five, you know, wax treatments, and you're going to break even. So you consider the repeated use of wax over time, over multiple years, there's a huge uh, footprint story to be had with Phantom. And then simple things like we had a two part system. So we had these two plastic bottles that we were shipping everywhere for shops to use and things like that. Moving forward with this metal bottle, we started an initiative where that can be returned. We'll clean it, reuse it, send it back out. So just creating a closed loop in our supply chain, even to make sure that we're not just contributing to the landfill waste and things like that. So, so just making sure there's no ancillary plastics in our packaging, you know, it's really nice to make a box that has these little custom designed foam pieces and things like that. And then all of that gets thrown away as soon as it's opened in the shop. Um, so just again, making sure we're, we're making little steps in, in this realm and then also kind of backing up our product development. You know, it's a, it's a core value to all of us to make sure we have snow and make sure that we're doing things responsibly. Well, and of course, there's also just the element of taking care of your skis. And if you take care of your gear, you're not having to purchase as much gear. So trying to build some longevity into those purchasing decisions from the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, I think the most important to think about thing to think about with Glide is like, that's the fun part. We want to have fun for a long time mm -hmm. and things like that. So, um, so that's, again, back to that kind of permanent thing. Maybe the fourth pillar should just be like fun. Like we want to, we want to keep fun in there. So, um, so, you know, I think, uh, I think the best and most fun part about this product is to, to get your skis treated and your board treated and get out there and, and have fun on the stuff. And, and that's really the, the root of everything that we do is make sure that everybody's having a good time out there. Yeah, so this is all very interesting. Um, I think there's still a question of what if you want to wax your skis and how does that integrate? And also knowing that there is maybe some better waxing dishes, uh, waxing options out there than there used to be. Um, where does that play into Phantom Glide? Yeah, so um, 
So I have a background in tuning and um, have spent a lot of time uh, making skis move fast over snow. And that was one of the things I wanted to bring to the table when I joined Phantom was um, how do we integrate with an evolving industry and and maybe erase that line in the sand that we put now that that we have equitable products out on the market. So um, Phantom doesn't change the way a base um, accepts wax, PTEX, base repairs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change any of that at all. So, you know, as when we go back to the beginning, you know, you have a base, we just want to make that base better. So you can, if you have wax condition specific, you can still do all that. But if you think of that performance curve as that wax wears off, you're going to hit a basically a higher floor, you know? So we want to take the highs and lows out of the performance of your skis that you experience as wax wears off and then you put it back on and then wax wears off. So, um, so that was one of the things that was really vital with this evolution of Phantom as a brand and part of our rebrand is to, you know, on cold days, a little cold wax goes a long way. I'm super, if we're lucky enough to ski in April and May, a little warm wax goes a long way. Um, I like to think sometimes of Phantom as the ultimate backup plan. You know, just raise that base. And then for those times that we just throw the skis in the, in the box and do a few laps here and there in the afternoon, you don't have to worry about having your skis perfectly prepared. Mm -hmm. But for, um, for those of us out there, racers included, um, there's a lot of good topical products. There's a lot of good eco-conscious waxes out there. Um, I always encourage people to find the most eco-conscious ways to do this and mm -hmm. things like that. But um, yeah, feel free to put some wax on top of Phantom. Good to know. Just one other question. Has there been any thought as to how this could integrate into like manufacturing process of skis or does this just seem like the after after the skis manufactured, um, that's where this makes the most sense? Yeah. So, um, you know, I get asked that a lot and and it's um, it seems like kind of a no brainer. Obviously, you're thinking about it. We're thinking about it. Um, and. We have partnered with Cardiff Snowcraft out of Utah Snowboard Company, and they have um, brought Phantom in as a uh, add-on to all their pro carbon split boards. One of the advantages of Phantom is you don't get wax transfer onto your skin. So for backcountry skiers, um, it's, it creates a really clean release and adhesion for your skins. Um, so it still gets added after the product has been built to completion. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as, um, treating bases prior to the construction of a product. Um, for us as a brand, we just don't have the, the bandwidth to work with um, and go through all of those expensive materials. Um, so we've partnered with a few companies that are doing some tests and things like that with us. Um, it's part of our R&D process um, because like I said, if you're thinking about it, we're thinking about it and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a component of keeping it as an add-on product, keeps it equitable for all of our dealers and our um, our great wholesale partners and things like that out there so that we're all kind of playing on a level playing field. Um, but yeah, if we could contribute to the greater good by by having this as a core product across the industry, that would, that would be huge for us. Nice. All right. Well, thanks, Sean. It was a great overview from Phantom Glide, and I learned a lot. And, uh, of course, I guess we should probably get back out there and ski. Yeah, it's time to go skiing. Uh -huh.